All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Teching 101 here with my sidekick, Barry. Barry is missing. Should be concerned about that. But at this point, you know, when you have a vampire brick sidekick, just you just kind of roll with it a lot of the times. All right, so I got two uh, Gear 4 Luffy's back here. That kind of looked like Guardian Nui statues when you put them side by side like this. That actually looks kind of cool. But we're going to need a co-host. So... I don't know, take uh, your mouse and just, you know, hover over the screen right now and click on another figurine that I can use as Barry's replacement. This is like Dora the Explorer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're going over where oh, like, oh, Exodia is? Oh, with a Karama? What about oh, all these other pop figurines over here? Over here? What are you clicking on? Oh, oh, somebody clicked on Kaido. Let's go with Kaido. Yeah, there you go. Congratulations. There we go. All right. All right, let's let's start over again. Let's try this out. All right, Kaido, it's okay. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Just roll with it. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Teching 101 here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here with my co-host, Kaido of the Beast Pirates, former member of the Yonko. No longer that anymore. But, hey, he's working his way back up, and he's trying, and that's what we want to see. You know, it doesn't matter how many times you stumble and fall, Kaido. You can always pick yourself back up, turn into a dragon, and soar into the heavens. Yeah, okay. So today we're going to be talking about Luffy gear shifting. Oh yeah, that's right. Luffy's like in a Fast and Furious movie right now. He's shifting gears, ladies and gentlemen. He's driving a car. I don't know how to do a manual transmission, but you know, I'm, I'm sure people do. There's probably somebody that's watching this that knows how to do that. So in the last chapter, the Straw Hats break out of the little Lego city inside of Rhodes' uh, diorama, his little uh, room that he built with this like fake city with the fake tree and everything like that, and he was thrown people into. Luffy broke out of it uh, through a brick wall that was designed to hold giants. The place they were being kept was mentioned to be like a giant prison, like a prison for actual giants. So it's no small feat that Luffy was able to bust through that wall, right? And uh, he does so by using a very specific gear forth technique that we've never seen before. He uses mini gear forth. So instead of uh, turning his entire body into bound man or tank man or snake man. Uh, but no, this is something completely different, where instead of turning into anything, really, he just makes his arm, like, inflates that with his muscle balloon, and then uses Kong gun to burst through the wall. So, a couple of differences, because some people are like, well, how is that any different from Gear 3rd? It's kind of the same exact thing. No, it isn't, because remember, uh, each of Luffy's gears affect a different system in his body. So Luffy's second gear affects his circulatory system where his blood is flowing, so he gets his blood pumping, that's gear second. Gear third affects his skeletal system because he's blowing into his bones, transferring the air around his body. Luffy just has one big super bone. They're not, like, disconnected or anything. It's one big super bone that you can blow air into in your thumb, and he can move that air wherever he needs to around his body. Luffy's body is truly terrifying if you stop and think about it for longer than, like, five seconds. So, if you don't want to just have, like, a biological nightmare, just, just... Yeah, he blows air into his bones, and he can move it around. And then gear fourth is his muscular balloon. So his muscular system, he blows, blows air into that, which makes him stronger. Because as we all know, I mean, if your muscles were to get bigger, like inflated like a balloon, that means you get stronger. That's that's just hard science right there, right? So different systems. And so when you have more, um, you know, power focused in a singular point, that's where Gear Forth really works. And the, also the idea of Gear Forth is that it makes his body tougher, but also still has the consistencies of rubber in the way that he can, like, condense down his fist with that kinetic energy and then release it in one big burst, okay? So that's gear fourth, gear third, and gear second, all right? So then we have gear fifth, though, and gear fifth operates a little differently. Uh, Luffy initiates gear fifth by, you know, pumping his heart because it's the beat of freedom, okay? The drum beat of freedom that the sun god Nika was known for and Joy Boy and everything like that. So that one, I mean, it kind of applies to his body because it changes his body quite a bit. He basically turns into a cartoon character, um, but it's a little different from the other uh, gears that he used. So this is a thing that comes up quite a bit 
bit in in the world of shonen manga. Probably the most notable one is is Dragon Ball Z, really. So Goku goes through so many different transformations. A lot of the Saiyans do throughout all of Dragon Ball Z. So you got Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan. Well, all the different subsections of Super Saiyan they use during the Android and the Cell Saga, like that powered up, bulked up version of Super Saiyan that Trunks used. And then there's the you know the uh, refined, perfect Super Saiyan that Gohan and Goku were in after they came out of the time chamber. Then Super Saiyan 2, then Super Saiyan 3, then go to the GT, Super Saiyan 4, and then into Super, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan, or Super Saiyan Blue, then Vegeta's Royal Blue, and then you get to Ultra Instinct, which is, like, different, okay? But the whole idea is, once you have all these really strong forms, using the lesser forms, and not lesser in the way that, like, they're not as cool, I mean, the original Super Saiyan is still really cool as shit, but, you know, in terms of, like, power, like, when Goku goes up against an enemy, and it's a really really powerful enemy, and Goku goes into Super Saiyan, he's kicking the crap out of him, we know that enemy is not really much to write home about, because it's like, Goku has like five more transformations on top of basic Super Saiyan to use, right? So it's like, okay, we know this isn't a threat unless we go at least into Super Saiyan Blue, and even that at this point is kind of like just the standard. Like, Super Saiyan Blue right now might as well be the standard Super Saiyan, right? Okay? And then when Goku has to go into Ultra Instinct, and, and then he still cannot win, it's like, oh, okay, now, now we're talking. Okay, now we're actually on a level of, like, this opponent they're fighting is, is pretty tough, right? Okay. So we have a similar issue with uh, Luffy going into his various gears. He's got gear 5th now, and that's clearly the strongest one, and there doesn't seem to be any real limit of going into gear 5th. It's not like he can only go into gear 5th, like, once a week or something like that. Uh, it does drain him, but there are negative downsides. Negative downsides, yeah, that's a redundant statement, redundant. But there are downsides to, you know, gear 4th as well. I mean, he has to refine them and get a little bit better at them. Uh, and we actually have seen those downsides have improved. Just the fact that Luffy can use a miniature version of Gear 4th in just his arm shows he's improved about this, right? Okay. So, um, some people have complained, you know, just like, why even bother having Gear 4th, 3rd, and 2nd? Luffy's not going to use them anymore. He just keeps using Gear 5th. So, I like it in the idea that Luffy unlocked this form against Kaido and he has truly unlocked this form. It's not a thing where, actually, it does happen in Dragon Ball. Uh, at the end of Super, you, uh, Goku uses Ultra Instinct during the Tournament of Power. And then after that, he tries to go into it again to fight against Vegeta. And Goku's like, I just I just don't know how to do it really anymore. I, it's just my body won't be able to go into that form unless I train at it, I guess, right? So I do kind of like the idea that Luffy could just go into Gear 5th whenever he wants. You know, he had to basically die in order to unlock that form. He beat Kaido in that form. He deserves that form, right? And so, you're know, like, yeah, why would he bother using Gear 2nd when he could go into this form of Gear 5th, which also has been stated to give Luffy tremendous amounts of elation. He feels good. And honestly... You could go a whole different direction of that, where Luffy could get, like, addicted to Gear 5th. He could get, like, oh, yes, it's the most free I've ever felt. I feel so happy and joyous when I'm in Gear 5th. I just want to be in Gear 5th all the time. Luffy, please, we care about you. The Straw Hats have to do an intervention. Like, Luffy, you've been using Gear 5th too much. It's just it's just too much. It's you're, you're already enough as it is, but now you're zipping around in Toon Force all the time, right? So... I don't think Oda's going to go that direction with it. Although, I mean, there is... You, you could do something with that there. Like, prolonged state of Gear 5th might lead to some stuff, you know, you don't know about. So, uh, whenever Luffy stays in Gear 5th for long enough and he runs out of power, he runs out of energy, uh, he needs to refuel, as it were. He turns off Gear 5th, he shrivels up into, like, his old man state, all right? And he has to shovel a bunch of food in his mouth, and then he can turn back into Gear 5th. And we've seen this in rapid succession at Egghead, where he went into Gear 5th, fought against Kizaru, turned off, had to eat food at the vending machine, had to go back into it again, and then he fought against the Gorosei, and then he ran out of power again. Bragi had to give him the fermented shark. He goes back into it again, back and forth, back and forth, right? So... Is there still going to be a place in this story for Luffy to use, like, Gear 2nd and 3rd? Gear 4th is still pretty, you know, I, I think it's still relevant to the story in the fact that, like, Oda just showed it in the last chapter. Like, yeah, Gear 4th, he could still do some tricks with that. And he's been training with it, too. I mean, he practiced during, I mean, he learned it during Ruskina, but he really hasn't had a chance to use it in pitched combat since Dressrosa, and then following up that at uh, Whole Cake Island, and then Wano. He's been using it a 
lot more, so it makes sense that he'd be able to refine it down to just using it in certain par portions of his body, right? Same thing with Gear Second. I mean, back when Luffy first developed Gear Second, he had to, like, have that whole thing where he had to pump his legs and get the blood flowing, and then after the time skip, he was able to just, Gear Second, just, just into his arm, launched one attack, like, jet pistol, and then turn it off right away, which also limited the uh, negative effects there. Remember back when he was using it a lot against Luchi at Eni's Lobby, and after using Gear Second in a prolonged state, he basically just collapsed and his body locked up, like he had muscular shutdown and he couldn't even move? Alright, yeah, that, that was a big deal, and we can't have that keep happening, but Luffy kept using Gear Second, kept training with it and learning about it, and then he eventually got to the point where he could use it with no downsides. Gear Third's downside used to be him turning into Chibi Luffy, alright? So he would use Gear Third, make himself big with the, uh, the bone balloon, and then after the attack was over, he'd shrink down and then turn back into normal size after a certain amount of time had elapsed, okay? So it makes sense that Gear 4th is doing the same thing there, right? So um, I went back and checked because uh, I was curious when the last time Luffy used just plain old vanilla Gear 2nd, all right? So the last time Luffy used a technique that was Gear 2nd based, it wasn't only Gear 2nd, it was kind of Gear 2nd and 3rd combined together, would have been the Red Rock, I believe, you know, so when Luffy showed up to fight against Kaido, Law, Zoro, Kid, and uh, Killer were also there, Luffy jumps up, uses Gamu Gamu no Red Rock, which is a combination of his elephant gun, so he makes, here comes the giant fist, but he also added Red Hawk onto that, evolving it into Red Rock, Rock being a much bigger, not, not just a hawk, but a big giant hawk in the sky, right, mythological bird kind of being, right, so that was a combination of Gear 2nd and 3rd, Luffy done this every so often. He used actually used a technique, Higant Jet Shell, to defeat Moria, to like pump all of the shadows after out of Moria's uh, stomach. Remember that at Thriller Bark? That was a really cool scene. And that really wrecked Luffy's shit after he was done using that, okay? So that was like the last time Gear 2nd, I think, was included whenever Red Rock was used. He also later on during that battle used a Rock Gatling, which I guess would have been the combination of using um, Elephant Gun and then Jet Gatling together. He used that against Kaido, so you could consider that as well. But the last time he used just a Gear Second technique, I'm pretty sure, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, was the fight with Katakuri. There was a moment in the fight with Katakuri, he uses regular Hawk Gatling, and then Hawk Stamp, which I think is the first time and only time Luffy's ever used Hawk Stamp. And then that was it. You know, that was it. Also, keep in mind, so like the naming scheme, it's... I, I wonder if Oda even has trouble keeping track of it sometimes. So Luffy's, you know, plain old attacks in, I guess, Gear 1 or like First Gear or is just Gamu Gamu no Pistol. Then in Normal Gear 2nd, it's Jet Pistol. Then when he learned hockey and added hockey onto it, it's like Hawk, Hawk Gatling or Red Hawk or I, I don't know if he's ever used Hawk Pistol. I know Hawk Rifle was a thing, so that's like adding hockey to it. And then you get to gear third, which is he got Pistol and then Elephant Gun with the hockey added to that. So there's like names for like just plain old gear second and third techniques and then names for hockeyed up gear second and third techniques. So uh, let's think about something here, okay? What if, I, we probably have to exclude Gear 5th here, alright, but we could maybe throw this in here too. Could there be a technique, I don't believe in Gear 6th, I don't think Gear 6th is going to happen, but could there be a technique where Luffy combines all of his gears together? So just like how Giant Jet Shell was used against Moria where he combines 2 and 3, could he combine at least 2, 3, and 4 in the same thing? Like I said, Gear 5th, kind of a different thing here. Although, Gear 5th is also where he's the most free and he could pretty much do anything. So it'd be pretty cool to go into Gear 5th and then use a technique with all of his other gears combined into one. Now, many of you might say that, like, what's the point? Because, like, Gear 2nd makes Luffy, Luffy faster. Well, he's already super fast when he's in Snake Man now. In fact, Luffy is most likely the fastest when he's in Snake Man. All right. I mean, once again, Gear 5th may be excluded from that argument. But outside of Gear 5th, Luffy's way faster when he's in Snake Man. His techniques are a lot faster, right? So why do, Gear 2nd is kind of redundant at that point. But I'm just talking more about, like, the aesthetic point of view. So, like, we have a state where Luffy is in Gear 5th. 
but then his skin turns red, liking Gear 2nd, and then he makes a giant fist, liking Gear 3rd, and then he compresses the fist, liking Gear 4th, and maybe he gets the, the he gets like the red skin from the, the blood, but then he also gets the cool tribal tattoos from Gear 4th, and then the giant fist from Gear 3rd, but still has the white hair from Gear 5th, just throws it all together into one big smorgasbord, and just, whoa, you know, brings it down, right? Okay. Um... That would be cool to see. That would be fun to see. To just throw all of Luffy's techniques together into one massive attack. Maybe that's how whatever the final, whoever the final villain of Elbaf will be. Maybe that's how Luffy will defeat that individual. Just throw everything, everywhere, all at once into one giant fist, okay? Look, when Luffy was fighting against Kaido, we were going on that whole thing, and I was just like, man, I really hope Luffy's not just going to defeat Kaido with a giant fist. Oda even said, like, ah, that's how Luffy always beats his opponents. Let's be a little clever here. And then it's like, no, it just it comes down to a giant fist. <laughs> it's like, all right, you know what? It's, don't fix what's not broken, right, Oda? It's like Luffy solves most of his problems by punching... A good solid punch will fix most issues. It's just a, a matter of how big the fist is and how fast it moves. Hell, look at Garp, okay? Garp is like almost 80 years old and he's solved pretty much every problem in his life by punching it really hard. He didn't get the epithet of the fist for nothing, right? And like grandson, like grandfather, and, and you know, Luffy's going to be able to do this as well, okay? So let's just, by the end of the story, have Luffy's fist the size of the moon and bring it down and punch out Eam. Like, let's just do that. You know those giant things that were walking around at Thriller Bark? Maybe we find out those things are the final villain. Luffy just makes a giant fist and punches those things out, like that were the size of mountains. It's just... Yeah, why not, right? Absolutely. But something else that we could utilize here, and this is something that is kind of similar to, like, gear shifting in a car in, like, rapid succession. I just realized Luffy stole from Deku. Luffy stole from Izuku Midoriya from My Hero Academia. Yeah, remember? Izuku, the second user's quirk, is gear shift, and he changes gears. He even names the techniques the same. Izuku had second gear, third gear, top gear. Luffy's over here doing the exact same thing. What the hell, Luffy? Taking things from Izuku Midoriya. Man. <laughs> but no, honestly... I kind of want to see that with Luffy, okay? I would like to see him go up against an enemy and then punch him normal and then shift into gear second like this. Doesn't have to do the position or anything. Just punches a dude and then boing, gear second, boom! And then as the person is getting hit by gear second, Luffy pulls back his fist, goes gear third right into that, boom, hits him again, rears back, gear fourth, or like mini gear fourth, you know, compresses the fist, uses Kong gun, hits him again, and then pulls back, and then goes into gear fifth, and then uses booming star sun god punch. And he does all of that in rapid succession. Like, the way it would be laid out in the manga is maybe only on one page. Like, maybe a cool double page spread where each panel is just normal punch second third fourth fifth and it just notches up higher and higher until you get to gear fifth that would be just like a really cool shot it, it would have very similar vibes to when goku was fighting boo and he had to stall for time and this is one of my favorite scenes in all of dragon ball z right it was when Goku was, like, going through all the Super Saiyan transformations, and he was just like, you know, what you see now is my normal state. This is a Super Saiyan. This is Super Saiyan 2. This is Super Saiyan 3, right? Kind of the same thing. All these different gears on the same page, one panel for each, Luffy just punching the same person back and forth, and then eventually ending with Gear 5th. There's still some cool things we could see from Gear 2nd and 3rd, all right? And also, just, like... Luffy's a pretty good uh, fighter. I mean, he, he can acclimate to his opponents relatively well. Um, I'm not saying Luffy would not use Gear 5th as overkill to take out somebody that's honestly beneath him. Like, when Luffy fought against the giant snake a few chapters ago, people were like, why did Luffy need to go into Gear 5th against that giant snake? He didn't really need to do that. Luffy could have beaten that snake with Gear 3rd. I, I think it's just because Gear 5th is fun. It's fun to go into, right? And also it gives Oda more liberty when he's drawing. You know, he's like, yeah, Luffy goes into Gear Gear 5th. I could draw him doing this, and it makes perfect sense because it's Gear 5th, right? But, uh, yeah, I mean, Luffy might be able to, like, oh, this 
character's not strong enough to warrant gear fifth, or I don't feel like using gear fifth, or especially if there's like another threat after this person, Luffy might actually be like show some acumen in fighting and be like, I'm gonna conserve my energy here. You get gear second, but your boss is getting gear fifth. Okay, like that kind of stuff, right? Luffy has made smart moves during battle. He definitely has. Like, even if those smart moves result in him being dumb. Like, a perfect example was when he was fighting against Eneru, and he had a smart move to turn off his brain and become an idiot. But it actually worked! All right, well, anyway, um, that's the video. I just wanted to make a, a video about this considering Luffy's, you know, other gears and their place in the story and all that. Uh, but I, I, with that all being said, there's still so much more that Oda could draw with Gear 5th, and there's so much more Luffy could use in Gear 5th. Like, Luffy, I'm pretty sure, could, you know, he could make himself giant. He could probably also mold his body into whatever shape he wanted. Like, I thought, like, I thought this when he was fighting Kaido. Luffy could probably turn into a giant dragon if he wanted to. Like, he can literally change the shape of his body, but that just might be with him, you know, perfecting that form a little bit more. But he could eventually get to that, that state, right? So, uh, we'll see. Maybe Luffy will turn into a dinosaur at some point maybe the kraken who knows <laughs> luffy with tentacles <laughs> okay thanks for watching everybody this will be teching and kaido signing out later you did amazing kaido you did fantastic